Hey everybody, I've got another lesson on extracting subtools. Okay, so you've got your object. Could look like anything. Let's, let's um, stray from this standard sphere. Move. Do or some alien character, and um, we're trying to make we're trying to um, throw some clothing on him or armor or jewelry or whatever. <clears throat> okay, so normally in previous versions of ZBrush, you would select a portion of the mesh and then you would extract, and it would take the time to think about it smooth mesh border, smooth mesh, and then, and then create your mesh, right? And whatever happened, that is what you were left with. And if you wanted to um, get rid of it, you'd have to select the subtool that it created, delete it, then go back to your original mesh and um, modify your original uh, selection. But, uh, this, like I said in my previous video, um, you can extract like that, and it is it acts as a preview that you can decide whether you like it or not. And if you do, you can accept the changes, which gives you a new um, new mesh, and then you can modify it or do whatever you want to after that. Um, but what I was going to do in this video is um, show everybody how to use all the cool to tools that are offered to you in the extract palette. So, going back to the mesh I had previously, <coughs> I'm going to select a portion. Okay, let's give him a, I don't know, armor or a shield or something. Something. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So um, we can extract like we were. Okay. I don't really like that too much. You know, so you move around in the workspace and it um, cancels that request. But I didn't really get a good look at it, so I'm gonna. Okay. No, I really don't like that. So then we can manipulate. Uh, um, modify these choices a uh, hundred percent on the, this first one affects the smoothness of the extraction that it creates so right now it's going to give a more uh, metallic look and very uh, rigid let's see what that looks like yeah see <coughs> okay um, let's get another view extract it's very rigid. Going back to the smooth, 100% smooth looks you know, uh, smoother. The edges are um, blended together more. And then this second smooth is harder to see by itself, but definitely this has a lot more craziness. Um, without the additional smooth. So let's take them both down to zero and see what that... Um, hard to tell, but uh, they they definitely work together. So, 100% a hundred, a hundred smooth now would look like this compared to this. And then both of them working together really smooths it out. So then you get a nice fine uh, ge uh, geometrical, I don't know, organic look. And then thickness. 
uh, one bit makes it whoa. Okay, let's zoom out to that because that is um, bigger than I thought. Boom. Okay, that that's pretty thick. And now, now let's play with the uh, smoothness stuff. Okay, well that's crazy. That's hard to see what's going on. I'm not sure. Um, let's see what that does over here. Zoom out. Extract. Oh, yeah. That that's just a bunch of chaos. Um, then let's go back down to. Okay, that's a little cleaner. Um, it just, you know, it has the rigid look, but it is not crazy like the other one. And let's see what both smooth looks like. Yeah. <clears throat> so the edges are a lot smoother with the um, both of the smooth groups on and the thickness. So now something I've never tried is um, okay I've tried zero thickness right which just creates <coughs> additional ge geometry right on top of your model then I go to my previous model and uh, um, invert or um, inflate in the negative direction to <coughs> make sure that the geometry I was working on was more visible um, but I'm gonna try hopefully this doesn't does not crash the pro program um, okay let's just see what negative one looks like mm, little little face <coughs> oh okay so it um, let's see <coughs> change the huh I'm not sure why you would use this okay let's huh I don't know really strange I <coughs> I'm probably depending on what type of uh, model you are working on this would be useful um I don't know. This model doesn't really uh, work for something like that, but it's it's nice. <clears throat> but um, I don't really like that mask anymore. So what I want to make is a face. So I'm going to divide this mesh up a little bit, showing the polys just to show how much it divides. Huh? It's kind of hard to see. Because it, it, it jumps from, you know, several hundred thousand uh, polygons, so you should be able should be able to see it. Just cut those um, boxes up, but it. Oh, what do I do? Or what I push? Oh, okay, yeah. Higher res, then higher, higher. Okay, you can see it around the edges. Eight million. 500,000 polygons, that's quite a bit. So if we zoomed in, huh, that sucks. Maybe it's easier to see from a distance. Um, okay, so then divide, divide, divide. I don't know, it, it's hard, but anyway, I'm going to create some type of face. <coughs> Make sure the eyes look nice. Nose looks right. Hmm. Okay, I'm liking that, and I'm going to 
see, just see what kind of extraction it has right now. Oh, yikes. Totally in the negative direction. I was not thinking. Let's see that. Let's see if that has any... I don't know. Any rhyme or reason. Ah. Uh, okay. Nope, not much. Huh. Okay. Um. So, definitely positive. What? Oh, did I accept it? That sucks. No, I don't really want that. So, delete. Always. Yes. Delete. <clears throat> okay. So then, go back down to. Well, too far. Um, extract. Okay, right now it's zero, so it wouldn't show up. And I'm experimenting with just a little bit. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, you can definitely see that. But let's see if it looks better with a smooth. Thinking, thinking. Smoothing mesh border. Okay, so that if I didn't have this on, <coughs> it wouldn't have to worry about the smooth uh, mesh process and probably take a lot less time. I'm dealing with 8 million polygons, so my computer might crash because of all of the smoothness that has to work out. So, I hope not. Um, this might take several minutes, but I was not thinking ahead. <coughs> Any time that I've worked with um, <coughs> heavy um, polygons like this and tried to extract something, anything, it has always fried my computer. So hopefully because I'm recording, there will be some type of mystical power that um, <coughs> uh, helps my computer run better or something. I've got a 64-bit processor, so I should be able to do this, but... I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. <clears throat> okay, well, while this is working, um, huh. Think, think, think. Does anybody have anything fun for the, um, April 4th? Sorry, ne never mind. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just, um, in, um, edit mode, so, uh, <coughs> um, does anybody have anything fun for February 14th? Um, yeah, I'm excited. I like holidays. <coughs> I like holidays because I I can make really, really fancy, fancy cards with all of the digital stuff that I know. Um, huh. uh, I don't know. No, I'm probably going to stop this because I don't want you guys just waiting here for nothing. But, anyway. <clears throat> oh yeah, that that's probably the last uh, piece of advice I have uh, when you're trying to extract something. If you are working on a, a big project or something, and you're working in the millions of polygons, <clears throat> think twice before you um, decide to um, extract at that level, because uh, computers don't usually or at least my computer doesn't usually um, <clears throat> respond very well um, to something like that. It's probably like lots of um, calculations and stuff and all that, but I don't know. So, <clears throat> uh, I hope everybody got to see the full length of what they can do when they are extracting new poly... Uh, new poly groups or uh, poly tools <coughs>